How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege. Today is July 30th on a Tuesday here to bring you guys some more stories in and around the NFL on today's show. On the first part of the show, we're going to go over a few things, some more on Tua Tungavailoa and Jordan Love, talking about their new contract extensions and bringing up a question, who is facing more pressure now? After these extensions are done, now heading into 2024, who's got more weight on their shoulders to maneuver through? Then also, talking about Geno Smith's recent comments about the Guardian caps, the funny-looking things that players wear on their their helmets during practices. They're actually allowed to wear them during the games this year, a new rule that was passed back in April. So we're going to be talking about Geno Smith considering wearing one of these Guardian caps in-game, being one of the first players to do so. Those topics and more coming on later on in the show. So before I start off on Tua and Jordan Love, if you guys have any questions or comments you'd like to make, please remember to use the Tibbin Donations link, gsmcpodcast.net. By using that link, I'm able to see your question or comment pop up on my screen. I'll read it out loud and get your guys' thoughts, your feelings on anything I say or on any of the topics on today's show. It's a big help for the show and also the network as a whole. So if you guys would... Please use the Tibbin Donations link, gsmcpodcast.net. We greatly appreciate it here over at GMC whenever you guys are able to do that. But with that being said, we can start off on the first topic on Tua Tungavailoa and Jordan Love. Now two of the top five highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. After last Friday, it was announced. We talked about Tua's deal, the four-year 2124 million dollar extension he gets 53 million dollars in salary then later on in the evening we have the news breaking of Jordan Love also getting that extension four years 220 million for Jordan Love now he's tied in a three-way tie with Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrow for the highest paid quarterback in the NFL earning 55 million dollars in salary reshuffling the top five now Um, three of the quarterbacks that got extended this year Tua and Jordan Love, along with Jared Goff, now form the new top five highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. So these two guys are the latest guys to get their extension. There was some difficulty, some extended period of trying to figure this thing all out, but they finally got it over the line. And now people, the media, everybody around this topic can start talking about what comes next, right? Who has more pressure on their shoulders to almost validate this contract you know you're getting paid like one of the top guys the top guy in the NFL in Jordan Love's case you could say so what are you going to do with that what kind of pressure is now what kind of expectations now face Tua and Jordan Love heading right away into 2024 especially after the seasons that these guys have had Tua uh, showed up for himself played like crazy last year to prove that he is worth this amount of money. Same thing with Jordan Love. He got a little bit further, but around the same value in terms of contract, total worth, and everything like that. So coming off of those strong seasons, now you get what you've always wanted. So what follows up after that? Well, to dig into more of the contract a little bit, just to discuss what could mean, what could it mean for the expectations going forward. According to Pro Football Talks Mike Florio, The goal for both Tua and Jordan Love was to make these new extensions four years. Instead of five years where you see, um, it feels like that's the the typical length for a new contract extension. You always hear about the five-year deals. Um, Usually, that's the normal, I feel like. Um, Other than, I guess, Patrick Mahomes getting like a 10-year contract or something like that. But usually, I feel like for these market-setting contracts, it's set to five years, right? The teams can extend the period a little bit longer, don't have to re-enter contract negotiation talks sooner. They have that extra year by adding that fifth year onto that. But according to Mike Florio, it was a big deal for Tua and Jordan Love because not only did they have the same agency firm, Athletes First, they really wanted to keep it a four years because they had the leverage, like I mentioned before, in 2023 playing like some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL and also their contracts were running out. They were both holding in, so the Packers and the Dolphins were a little bit in a jam here. You don't want to put this off any longer. You don't want Jordan Love just sitting on the bench watching practice instead of integrating this new offense, new scheme with him 
actually taking part in it. Same thing with Tua. After the season that they had last year being derailed by injuries, you just don't want Tua kind of participating in training camp. So they had all the leverage. So that's how they ended up getting this deal, these deals, I should say, over the line, two, four years, um, because it benefits the players a lot more. They don't have to wait too much longer. They're both around 25, uh, 25, 24 years old, I would say. So keeping it in the four years, they're still going to be 29, 30 years old, still at a very good age where they could get another four-year deal at least, probably five-year deal potentially, depending on the trajectory of their, their careers at that point. But this sets them up nicely to re-enter contract negotiations. And that was a big deal for them, kind of alluding back to the fact that we mentioned yesterday on why these deals were so close together in terms of announcement. Now you can kind of see where the collaboration happened a little bit here under the same agency firm and happening um, at the same time. But back to the question on the pressure that both of these face, who you know faces more? Both of them actually answered that question in some part over the last few days. Starting with Tua now, he said, I'm the highest paid employee in this office. I got to get my whatever together. I got to get that right and get our guys moving in the direction that we need to go to be able to do those things. And Jordan Love said a similar thing, basically saying that there always is pressure on him as a first round pick, um, becoming the starter, the pressures of that following in Aaron Rodgers' footsteps, all those scenarios that he's already had to go through, there's been pressure on his shoulders already, and you could say he's dealt with it as well as anybody could have dealt with all three of those scenarios, and now that he's getting paid like a top and quarterback, the highest paid quarterback in the NFL, it's not something that he's necessarily not seen before, like those three examples I just mentioned. He's had the shul- he's had to bear the pressure of uh, all those scenarios already. So just adding on to it with a different scenario, a different circumstance to him isn't something any different. He said there's no hiding from it. So it's not like he's avoiding the question. He knows that there's pressure. He's dealt with it already. So it seems like he feels pretty comfortable with it at this point in time. But where do I see this? Where do I feel like the most pressure is um, on either of these quarterbacks? I would say that there is more pressure right now on on Tua. I think Tua is the clearer answer for me. I can think of more reasons why for Tua, honestly, at this point in time than Jordan Love. Um, because it is a little interesting how you think of it um, when you really break it down. I mentioned Tua as the one facing most more pressure just because the record he has against the playoff teams, it's not very good. I mentioned it probably in the episode with Tua, if not yesterday, but... He has a losing record, basically, last year and over his career against playoff teams. So that's something you don't want to see. If you're getting paid like some of the top-earning guys, you have to win those big games. So that's one of the criticisms against Tua. There's also the health concerns. He's coming off a pretty healthy season, but can he consistently do that and show up each and every year? That's another thing. Not Not the most athletic guy in terms of quarterbacks and the Josh Allens, the Patricks, the Lamars the Jordan loves, but extremely, extremely accurate, very precise. And he fits this offense very well, which I thought was enough reason to give him this extension based on where the Dolphins are at this point in time in their progression to getting better, being one of those contending teams. Um, And talking about Jordan Love also, I feel like his expectations weren't as high as Tua's, if that makes sense, right? Tua was a higher draft pick. Everybody was saying tank for Tua, tank for Tua, and then he gets in the league and he dealt with those injuries. There were some shaky moments, whereas with Jordan Love, he was a late round draft pick. He was just sitting on the bench behind Aaron Rodgers. Nobody really thought he could ever live up to Aaron Rodgers. And don't you know, first year he comes in, it looks bad, and then he turns it all around and he looks like just another quarterback that the Packers have found miraculously that could just lead them into the next decade of great quarterback play in that team. Um, So the expectations right off the bat were set low for Jordan Love, and now that he has surpassed them, I feel like right now in the eyes of everybody, you see all the hype around Jordan Love too. I think right now he's everybody's favorite young quarterback who's going to take the league by storm. Right there with C.J. Stroud, I think those two guys right now have really um, 
earn a lot of America's, you know, love and feeling that they're going to be the next guys um, in this progression of quarterbacks. So with that, I feel like the heat won't come on too strong for Jordan Love right at the beginning. But not to say that he hasn't earned it. Like I said, fantastic second half of the season, great performances in the playoffs. And if you look at Jordan Love, he always it always feels like he has the same expression on his face um, when you see him during the games. Just in those moments, he doesn't really blink. Uh, it feels like the moment doesn't phase him at all. And that's something you'd love to have, a calm demeanor for everybody else in the huddle. If your quarterback's feeling calm, nonchalant about the situation, it makes everything a lot easier. And you saw that in the game against the Cowboys, how it didn't look like a playoff game, honestly, for how Jordan Love was playing out there. Same thing in the 49ers game. Um, unfortunately, they lost, but... I just think that comes with the inexperience that Jordan Love had, and now that he can build off of that, there is some more hype there for Jordan Love. Not to say that in a way that could build some different sort of pressure for Jordan, because now you have to live up to those expectations, right? You have to live up to filling the shoes of Aaron Rodgers there in Green Bay. So in that way, if you bring that up, that's almost a different kind of pressure. You could even say more pressure for Jordan Love, just consistently maintaining that high level of performances because now people are going to expect that with how good the Packers looked and everything like that. Whereas with Tua, we still want to see it. He was a higher draft pick, so the expectations were already set high before, and now you have to live up to those. But overall, I would say Tua has to prove it a little bit more um, just because the money and equating that to big games and big game situations and winning those big games, I would say Tua has yet to prove that, not a great record, so he has to kind of elevate his performance now to get people to buy in to him earning that contract, because right now, I think there's definitely more scrutiny around Tua and earning that contract, based on all the reasons that I said, but that's how I feel about it, I'd love to know what you guys think, who's facing more pressure in 2024, is it Tua, or is it Jordan Love, leave your guys' thoughts in the comment section, but with that being said, we can move on to the next topic, talking about Geno Smith, some more quarterback talk on today's show, thinking of wearing the Guardian cap on his helmet during regular season games in 2024. The NFL passed that rule now that it is an option for players to wear it if they want to, and Geno Smith is the first NFL player that I've seen talk about actually considering it, so we're going to talk about what he said and whether or not this is going too far on the side of player safety. I'm all for it, but this might be taking it a little bit too far in my opinion. So we're going to dig deeper into that when we return. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 